Welcome to CountryLifeProjects.com. I'm Henry Reinders. This is video seven of 15 videos in our shed project. In this video, I'm going to be going over three different skirting options for your shed. Skirting is the base that goes around the perimeter of your shed if you decide to do that. It's important that you watch this video before you go on to video eight because depending on what kind of option you choose may change the way you install the LP smart side panels. Also watch video 12 and 14. They deal with trim again. There's some differences there. So it's important that you watch all those videos. So that said, let's get started with our uh, skirting options. We're going to be showing you the different options you have for your skirting around the base of the shed. Or if you're not using a skirt, uh, alternate, two alternate ways that we can do that. However, if you're using a new door, a lot of the new doors have a different sill system, and I really don't think they're all that strong. So all of the various ways that we can do this, which we're going to show you shortly, take into consideration the, the weakness in the sill here. You can see, right now we've just clamped it in place. This isn't actually installed. I just put this here so you can see. If I push on this with my thumb, it bends down. Now, if you're standing on that, or if you're you know, bringing your lawnmower across there, or heavy rotor tiller, that's going to get damaged pretty quickly. Now, in a house, quite often, this will be on a concrete slab, or you may have a supporting piece of wood underneath that. But when you have a situation where it's overhanging like this, you have to support the sill somehow. So I'm going to pull the door out. We're going to put it on the table. I'm going to show you a little bit more detail as to why we're going to do that. Okay, we've laid the uh, door on the table here, just so I can show you underneath that there is no support underneath this sill here. This part would actually sit on your floor. This part doesn't sit on anything. So what we're going to be doing, I'm also going to show you an older door to show you the difference, but what we're going to be doing to compensate here is we're going to be putting this piece here underneath, and we're going to glue this to our wall. And that's going to provide the support we need over here. This part that hangs over will work as a drip edge so no water can actually climb back up and through. And that should give us sufficient strength. And you'll see once we have this all installed later that that should be the case. I'm going to show you the older style door frame and sill. Why back then they didn't have to worry about it. You take a look at this one. We just took this out and uh, replaced our front door. This one here has wood all the way across. And on top here, if you look on top, you'll notice that the sill wraps right around, comes all the way back. It's very strong. That U design gives it a lot of extra strength, and there's no give in this at all. This situation, if this was overhanging, you wouldn't have to worry about it at all. But with the newer doors, we have to figure that out, and we will be showing you that. Okay, we put our door back in place here, because I want to show you how these different skirting details will work, or if you're not using a skirt. This is material we're going to use for our drip cap after. But right now, I want to show, the other, show you the other two options. This plywood here, for the first option, I just want you to picture this as being our smart side panel. We're just using 3 8 ply. It's the same thickness. Now, if you're using a skirt all the way around the perimeter of your shed, this is the height that it's going to be at. And what will happen is it will just carry through. And then when you do your trim on your door, it would just sit on top like that. And it would be completely finished. Of course, you have to remember that's going to be your finished panel there. Now, if you're not using a skirt, your smart panel is still going to carry through like this. And it will end at the blocking that we have here. The blocking is actually being removed right now just so we can do this. And this piece would still go in, but it would stop it flush with the edge of your sill. So you just bring that there and you would run this down. Now one thing you should note that if that's the bottom of your smart panel there. You would probably have to trim this off a little bit so that it all is flush when you're finished. The other thing, all these pieces, this piece, which would be your smart panel, and this piece here should all be glued so that it, when it has that resistance when people step on there, or if you're running heavy machinery across the top of there, you have to have glue on there. And 
that's how that will work. Next, I'm going to take these pieces off, or this piece here off, and we're going to show you how to do a skirt. And this is just a piece of scrap lumber. We're going to show you how to do a skirt with a drip cap, uh, and that's really important. If you live in areas that are very wet, very damp, you definitely want the extra protection. The other two methods are okay if you're in a drier type of climate. So we'll do that next. Okay, I've secured our 2x6 skirt to the bottom here. You'll notice that I have some backing here. You'll also see that I am flush with the underside of our sill. That's important because we're using 1x6 underneath the sill. You should also note that I got a piece of 3 8 plywood glued in place here. This is just leftovers from the uh, plywood gussets we used on our trusses. And if you slide this piece under, you will see we are flush on the bottom here. And this would get glued on as well. Don't worry about this being different here. More than likely you're going to have a bit of a ramp here which you can build, in, build into this section here. It'll look perfect when you're done. So that takes care of that detail. Now as far as your drip cap goes, you want to cut it to fit beside your sill and snug in here. You'll have backing here and behind here so when you put your smart panel on later, which I'll show you a little bit more on the corner detail, you'll have something to nail into because you'll want to have a nail in between your studs as well when you're doing it this way. And make sure this is nice and secure in here. And when you're before you put your trim on, well, I'll show you that right now actually. Let's assume this is our smart panel. Keep your smart panel up about an eighth of an inch, otherwise water will collect in there and it will rot faster. And same with your trim when you're doing it this way. Your trim would come down like that on top. You'd want to keep it up a little bit as well. But before you do all that, right after you get your grip cap in place, you want to silicone this here. You can also put a little bit underneath and it'll be completely sealed. That way you get all these little cracks in here. No water will be able to get through. Any water dripping off your sill will just drip off this edge here. will not touch the wood underneath. So next we're going to go to the corner. I'm going to show you the way I do it. Okay, we're going to do the outside corner now. I've already put the temporary 2x6 skirt on the bottom here. You'll notice that I've kept it down about 3 quarters of an inch. We need this backing for our smart side panel. I'm going to be putting the nail in between each stud as well on each stud. And also as a backing for our drip edge. So your first cut will be this piece here. It's going to go down first. We've just cut this down, bent it over. This piece here comes out a little bit on an angle and I've bent it over with a pair of pliers here. What that'll do, once we get that in place, is we'll allow this piece, which we have an angle cut and then we've taken that, bent it over that's the piece that would come over there. And then just angle this up slightly so it doesn't interfere with this edge here. So what you would do is first put a good bead of silicone here and some up here. So that when this goes on, there's silicone behind here and underneath here. You would put that on. And this piece would go on top like this. And because this runs underneath here, any water that might get in here will run through and off here. You should also put silicone here and here and here so that no water can make its way back here. So I'm going to just nail that on temporarily and then I'll just show you how you can just finish this up here a little bit and also the importance of having a 2x6 skirt instead of a 1x6 or 1x8 or 2x8 because we need this depth here for our smart side panel as well as our trim. And I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, I've just temporarily nailed these in place. I uh, just use galvanized roofing nails. Keep them up about 3 quarters of an inch. Just nail them on the studs. So all you need to do there, 
course I went over the silicone underneath here. If you do get any coming out of here, don't wipe it off. Let it dry up, uh, maybe overnight, and then just rub off the excess. It makes for a much nicer finish. Now as far as this piece coming out here, what you can do is just take your pliers and just squeeze that together. That'll keep that tight. If you're concerned about this being too sharp, you know, walking along here, hitting that with your leg, just take a little file, just take that off, round that off a little bit. Now, when you are nailing this on, you'll notice that this has a bit of an angle on it coming down. Don't push it down so hard that this flattens out. You want to retain a little bit of that angle. That allows the water to run off properly. Also, with your smart panel, smart side panel, you need this depth here, the 2x8, or the 2x6 I should say, because by the time you put both of these on, you have a total depth of 1 and 8 inches. If you only had 3 quarter inch down here, this would actually extend farther out than your skirt, would not look very good. The other thing I recommend, when you install the trim and the smart side panel, is to keep them up about an eighth of an inch. Just use a spacer all the way around when you're doing it. What that will do is prevent water from staying trapped in here and causing this to rot sooner. The other thing you want to do, regardless of whether you use a skirt like this with a drip cap or the other methods we're using, just make sure the bottom of your panel here is primed and even a little bit on the back just in case you ever get moisture coming up there. That will greatly extend the life of your smart side panels and your trim. I would also do the same on the bottom of your trim, even up the back a little bit. That pretty much covers our drip edge installation. Now, earlier uh, we put on our smart side panel on the front first, and then we went and we did the sides after our soffit material and fascia boards and everything were done. If you're doing the drip edge cap down here with the 2x6, your panel is not going to be installed the same way. It's going to have to be done later after you do that. Well, for the other two trim treatments, you can put it on first. So if you decide you're going to do the drip cap down here, that means you're not going to be able to put this panel on until you get to the, this point now where we're actually doing the trim. So it'll be drip cap, the smart side panel, and then your 1x4 or whatever, 1x6 trim, depending on what you use. We're using 1x4. So that means that you're going to have to still put the door in, not put this in, which means that when you're putting your door in, you're going to have to take some scrap pieces of the smart side panel and you're going to have to just screw it to the wall, top and bottom, when you put your door in so that you know how far your door has to come out. Because that has to go in and it has to be flush with this material so that when you put your 1x4 on after, that it sits nice and flat here. The other thing, this is a full size panel and when you put in the uh, drip cap with the 2x6 skirt, it's going to have to be cut. So I'm going to show you where, how that's going to work out with your trim up top and the importance of that. Just let me grab my ladder and we'll go up there and I can show you that. Okay, up here you can see that this panel is about, well it's three quarters of an inch down from our, our first top plate. This is our second top plate or our support top plate, but it's three quarters of an inch down here. And from here it's a full sheet down to our 2x6 uh, joist header on the floor. If you use the drip cap and you have the 2x6 underneath, obviously this is going to have to be cut. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are still on this plate here. If you go too high and then you put this trim on here, you can see that, say this panel was uh, around here, which is right on the top of that plate there, that this joint will not get covered by your 1x4 trim because this 1x4 trim carries around on the front here and the way it's set up now you can see it covers this joint quite nicely and there's very little chance for water to make its way down into here so when you 
to do that and you're cutting this panel, make sure that it's far enough down here, whatever measurement that is, to make sure that you're covering it when you bring the 1x4 trim around. Okay. The other thing is that on the top, I'm just going to move to the center here. When we uh, show you our framing, where we're putting our ladders here for the rake, the, this panel here has to go in first. Now that's fine, you can still do that, and you're going to have to do that in order for this to be finished the way it is. So when you're doing this side here, when we get to this point, you can still put these top pieces in here. All you have to do is figure out what height this is, snap a line across, and then put these panels in from that line up, and then go ahead, as I've shown you in the video on doing the ladders and how to install all this, these parts here, go ahead and proceed the same way, finish up your soffits, and so on. And then later on, when you come back and you put these panels in, you can just butt them up to these panels here. So that's really important, and that won't interfere with the process for most of the videos that we've done. So, other than that, that's only the real main considerations. Um, because you, I should mention too, because you can't put these panels on until after you drip cap, you should keep all your internal bracing as much as possible in place. Of course, with the door here, you can't do that because it's, it sits inside out from the wall a little bit, and obviously you have to get in and out. So, what I would recommend just for this end here, because we have the door, inside the shed, just put a brace this way on the inside, a 2x4, from the floor up to about here, and do the same thing over here, and that, uh, that will help keep the shed square, and you can always double check it just to make sure, put a level on here as you go. Other than that, there's not too much more to that. We're, uh, we're not going to be focusing on that finish, however. Uh, there is video showing you how to do the drip cap, but we're not going to be doing it that way on this particular shed. Next, I'm going to show you how we finish our trim on the top, because we can do that first, regardless of whether you have a skirt or if you just go with the trim on the corners and the door.